When I went through Marine Corps basic training back in 2012, I hated the M16A4. Fast forward 12 years, and after a little bit of education and, and a deeper look into this platform, I still hate the M16A4, which is almost entirely because of the fact that I'm five foot three. This thing was not fun to haul around in training, so my heart goes out to the Fallujah Marines. So about two weeks ago, Garantham released a video on the M16A4. So if you want to know about the history, implementation, and use of this weapon system, go over to his channel. What I want to talk to you today about specifically is the trigger group, the burst trigger group, why it's good, why it's bad, and the unique functions of it and how it works. This particular M16A4, no, it's not a government M16A4. It's not FN, like I was issued. Um, I kind of made this out of garbage. I figured that some people would be nostalgic or maybe they recognized it from a video game so they'd want to rent it out. Um, so I, I took this barrel out of our scrap pile. It was like a, it was like a post ban barrel with no threads. It looks like there was some kind of weird permanently pinned on fake muzzle device. I uh, got rid of that. I, I put some threads on it with the lathe and uh, this trigger group. I had most of a burst trigger group. Um, what I didn't have was the semi-auto disconnector. So um, I took a regular full auto disconnector and I reduced the thickness of it on a belt sander to make it what it is. And uh, you can see in one of my shorts where I actually had a malfunction, the thing was bone dry. And uh, the two disconnectors were rubbing on each other and it caused like an eight round burst instead of a three round burst. Musket time. That's not how burst is supposed to work. But uh, all it needed was oil and now it's working fine. So here you're looking at an M16A4 fire control group. You have your auto sear, you have your hammer, selector, and the rest of the guts here. So in the semi-automatic position, which it's currently in, it functions as a semi-automatic rifle should. Pull the trigger, hammer releases, the trigger is still pulled, and the disconnector will arrest the hammer, ending its cycle. But you'll notice in this, it's a little bit different than your conventional AR-15 trigger group. Here you have two disconnectors. You have the semi-automatic disconnector on the left and your burst disconnector on the right. So in the semi-automatic position, the semi-auto disconnector is free to move and will function the way it's supposed to, and it catches the hammer while the trigger is pulled after the round is fired. And here you can see as I put it into burst, the semi-automatic disconnector moves back. Semi, burst, semi, burst. The auto sear is now free to move to catch the hammer. I pull the trigger, but the selector is blocking movement of the semi-auto disconnector. You can also see that at this particular position in the burst cycle, the burst disconnector is able to move. It's in the forward position to catch the hammer. As it goes through its cycle, you'll notice that both disconnectors currently are arrested. I'm pulling the trigger, but both of them stay put. So if I cycle the hammer, you hear a click, you hear another click, now the disconnector's forward. This is the end of the burst cycle. And that's because of a ratcheting wheel on the hammer. So here you can see the burst disconnector and the burst ratcheting wheel there. So you have thick spots and thin spots on the ratcheting wheel. And so during the thick spots on there, the disconnector will be held back by the hook up here and it will allow the hammer to move freely. When it gets to the thin spot on the ratcheting wheel, that's when the disconnector moves forward and we'll catch the hammer. Here's the best close-up I can give you of the ratchet wheel at work contacting the burst disconnector. So 
So regardless of what position the safety is in, first semi or safe, that ratchet on the hammer is always functioning. So if I put it on safe here, it's still functioning. It's still turning. And what that means is, regardless of what position it's in, the burst function is still counting the rounds. So if you fired an untold amount of rounds and you go from semi to burst, you might get one round, you might get two rounds, you might get three rounds. It all depends on what position the ratchet on the hammer was last in. So once again, just a basic rundown of the cycle of operations here. So there it's cocked. This is in the semi-automatic function. Bang, click, reset, bang, click, reset. Now I put it in over and burst. I'm gonna hold back this here. Bang, 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 click. Reset, bang, 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 reset, click. Something that a uh, few people ever talk about with this platform is the inconsistency of the semi-automatic trigger. So with the burst fire control group, when you're shooting in semi-automatic, you're going to get a you're gonna get two heavy pulls and one light pull. And the reason for that is in that burst fire control group, you have two different disconnectors. Each of those disconnectors has its own spring. And while the burst ratchet is going through its cycles, for two out of three of those cycles, you're going to be fighting two springs. And then for one of those, the disconnector spring will be not under tension or at rest, and that'll be your light pull. So between the M16 I was issued in boot camp and the M4 that I was later issued in the fleet, uh, both of those have burst fire control groups in them. And uh, when it came to like table one qualification, which that's like your traditional marksmanship qualification between 200 and 500 yards. Um, you never knew what cycle the trigger was on. So you, you didn't know if you're gonna get a heavy or a light trigger pull. But uh, if you're a good shot, like I was fifth award expert, um, it didn't make a difference. It was just kind of annoying. And one last bit of information on this for you, if you didn't know, some of you might be wondering, what, why is there not rails to the end of the handguard? What is this? Why is that missing? The reason for that is this is actually a cutout for an M203 bracket. So if I take off the bottom handguard, you notice that falls away. That is so that the M203 grenade launcher can connect to the barrel or clamp to the barrel up here. That was one of my first thoughts when I got my issued rifle in uh, basic training was like, why, why do we not have rails to the end of this? And why is there that awkward slant? Like, it's a dumb thing. But no, that's for the M203 grenade launcher. So I hope you enjoyed that and I was able to demystify the burst trigger group for you. I've got a lot of videos coming up here. I'm planning on making one where I take apart all four types of AR-15 M16 trigger groups for you. That's right, I have a four position fire control group to show you. So until then, take care. Ah, uh, mic on me. Oh. Shh. I forgot my microphone again. I don't know where my microphone is.